Well, oops. <laughs> hey, trying to get these overlays off of here. Cancel. Sorry. Hope you guys are doing good. Shoot. Having some complications here today. Oh, there you go. Hope you guys are doing well. Having a good day. And, uh, um, yeah, so um, based on um, some of the information our brother uh, Montez uh, shared yesterday on that live stream, I, I wanted to, uh, my wife and me kind of were kind of binge watching all the um, Shroud of Turin videos. And uh, you know what? That, there is something there. That thing, there's something there, you know. There's just no way around it. <laughs> Pastor T. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, how are you, Emmanuel? God bless you guys. Yeah, there is something to that. And uh, it is, uh, it is, you can't, you know, for me, I'll be honest, I was very skeptical about it. And I didn't believe in it. You know, this is for Palestinians people who've lived in the Holy Land, quite often you get so overloaded with holy sites, holy sites and holy relics and holy rocks and, you know, all this stuff. And you just, because there's so much of it over there and you've been to it and seen it and over and over again. And so kind of develop a maybe unhealthy skepticism about holy sites. And of course, there's the verse by Jesus where Jesus says that and to the woman, the Samaritan woman, he said, the, uh, you know, she said to Jesus, you know, we worship on this mountain and you Jews worship over in Jerusalem. And he says, well, believe me, the day's coming when you worship neither here nor in Jerusalem. For the Father seeks such to worship him in spirit and truth. And so it doesn't matter whether, they're, you know, it's not a place. God doesn't live in a place. He lives everywhere. He's everywhere. Even though he has manifested himself in special ways, in special places, most significantly Jerusalem, uh, in terms of the history, the Bible history. And so Jerusalem is very special. And uh, I'm, you know, but and then there's the, uh, the issue of the Shroud of Turin. And I think that, you know, there is really a connection uh, between this and uh, Islam. And the connection primarily I see is that there is no historic, uh, historic evidence of Muhammad. There's no historic evidence of Muhammad uh, from the seventh century. You know, you know, Muhammad, you can't find his name. Um, you can't find his name. Hello, give the gospel of Jesus. Hello, Arizona. Okay, 11.13. Now let me look. Now somebody put, posted a uh, verse. So I want to just check it out real quick. Uh, I don't, I'm not as, I don't have a brain like uh, Sam Shimon that just, um, <laughs> memorizes the verse and its address. Or do they say he has fabricated this Quran? Say, O Prophet, produce ten fabricated surahs like it and seek the help of from whoever you can. <laughs> well, Am Yakulun Iftaranahu Kul Fa'atu Bi Ashar Surah Mithlu Ma'atarib Muftarit Muftarit you know, a couple of ten surahs, please. Didn't Satan come up with a surah? And Muhammad thought that it was Quran. And, uh, you know, we could, this, this, this verse is very fertile ground to do a live stream because there's so much <laughs> there's so many uh different ways to tackle that so thank you so much for sharing that and uh, 
Yeah, we we will we will talk about that. You know, maybe do a whole episode about the way they have come up with so many different surahs like it. And uh, so the uh, anyway about the shroud of Turin. The thing about the shroud of Turin, you guys, this thing I think is real. And and what got me, you know, like I said, I was very skeptical and said, okay, shroud, where you know, you know. Stuff at the Catholic Church has got lots of holy relics. But, you know, one thing I don't like that I've seen in Orthodox churches and I've seen, I don't, I haven't seen them in Catholic Church, but maybe it is they have like the bones of saints and stuff like that. And so I'm just very like, uh, not really paying attention and stuff like that. But the Shroud of Turin is a little different. This, this thing, you guys is just in a universe by itself and literally the shroud of Turin is in a universe of its own there's nothing like this there is nothing like this on planet earth the shroud of Turin is, is just in a world by itself and uh what really got me interested in it i'll be honest is about it uh two years ago actually when uh, uh, Gary Habermas, who has done some, you know, unbelievable works, fantastic work on the resurrection stuff that, you know, uh, he's one of the greatest scholars on the resurrection. He's written his doctoral thesis on the, I'm not sure if I should say doctoral thesis. I think it's thesis, I think it's for a master's degree. And for the doctoral, uh, I think it's called something else. His PhD, uh, uh, PhD, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I don't think it's called a thesis, but uh, regardless. Um, oh, Emmanuel visited the, wow, inside the Pope's grave. Emmanuel, you're, you are guaranteed salvation, my friend, now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, he visited the, the Vatican. So, <laughs> so anyway, you guys, um, when you compare, when you talk about historicity, his, you know, because when Jesus came to earth, that's when eternity entered into history. Literal history, like you talk about American history, George Washington, Lincoln, and stuff that happened in World War II, the Nazis, all that's history. And we know this is real. And we can go there and we can look, we can touch the, uh, uh, you know, like I've been to Germany, you can see the Brandenburg Gate, you see the, the different um, historical relics of World War II, of Nazism. So it's there. You, I went to England and over there you can see, you know, the cathedral and all that stuff. And and you just see that, the, uh, and Rome, I love Rome. Rome, I mean, not Rome, but Italy. I, I haven't been to Rome, but I went to Italy. And there, you see that these things are real. Well, the Shroud of Turin, you guys, I believe it's, oh, dissertation. Okay, <laughs> thank you, babe. <laughs> My wife knows. Uh, you know, You know, I, I just don't think there's a way around it that, that it's anything but the, the 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 actual shroud that Jesus was wrapped in. There's just no other way. There's no other way. You know, let me just show you. I'm going to show you like 12 slides, facts about the Shroud of Turin. And I think I'll start actually with the last one just because... Um, just because it says some fantastic, some amazing things here. Let's see. Um, uh, this this interests me here. You know, sometimes, you know, I, used to, I love Chuck Missler, and he used to really get into, like, probabilities and that type of stuff. The odds against this image being someone other than Jesus are astronomical. 
225 billion to one, according to Paul de Gale, a French Jesuit priest and engineer, which means it is not unreasonable to conclude the man on the shroud is indeed the historical person we know as Jesus of Nazareth, around whom his life, death, and resurrection, the Christian faith, was built and launched and um let me just okay the man imprinted on the shroud that the man imprinted on the shroud is that of jesus of nazareth nazareth doesn't in and of itself prove or disprove that jesus came back to life and rose from the dead but there are strong indications that at very least something extraordinary and very unusual occurred beneath in the cloth. Okay. Something amazing happened with the shroud, you guys. And, uh, but look, look at the, look at the probabilities there. The odds against this image being someone other than Jesus are astronomical. 225 billion to one. And this is an engineer. Okay, so this is someone who understands numbers and stuff like that. Okay, and, and you know, when we say that, you say, well, you know, people just say stuff, you know, and people like to uh, throw out numbers and do stuff like that. Well, you guys, you know, with, with, you know, as, as, you know, my wife and me were watching these programs, you know, the, um, there's what's called points of, uh, congruity, you know, uh, where you can, uh, actually measure, you know, like the features on someone's face and, um, uh, and aspects of what is on the shroud and just, it's so clearly um, related to what the Bible says happened to Jesus. And, huh? To the picture from the fifth century. Yeah, and if you wanted to compare it with the picture, you know, we're going to talk about all of these, the different. And you know what? I think maybe tomorrow we'll do something about the... Uh, there was another piece, you know, the, 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 the Gospel of John talks about two, at least two uh, cloths, possibly three uh, burial cloths. There's the shroud, there was the head covering, and there's um, possibly another shroud or uh ties that he was tied up they, they tied the body they tied the shroud to the body um so there's possibly more than just the shroud but tomorrow hopefully we'll talk about the head uh you know because the bible talks about the head covering there was a head covering and the head covering they also have the head covering and it's in spain uh what's it called mandalorian some I can't remember exactly what it's called, but um, we're going to talk about the shroud today. And depending how this goes, we may end up talking about the head covering as well. You guys, this stuff, it is <laughs> just keep in mind those uh, probabilities. The probability of it being someone other than Jesus is 225 billion to one. I mean, this is, <laughs> it is just, uh, and when you start here, you know, and I think you probably have heard some of this before, but let's, let's go ahead and look. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, let's go ahead and look at some of these facts. And, uh, um, you know, since our brother, our brother Montez is the one who really uh, opened the door, kind of talking about this and the brother, um, Emmanuel uh, has actually um, been to the Vatican and kissed the Pope's ring. Um, 
which means he's guaranteed salvation. No, I'm just kidding, you guys. He, it's just at one time I went witnessing. We were witnessing in Pennsylvania, and it's over there. There's three group, groups of Catholics, okay, in Pennsylvania. In Scranton, we used to live in Scranton, which is where your president, Joe Biden, is from. And, uh, and over there, there's three groups of Catholics. There's the Polish Catholics, the Italian Catholics, and the, uh, shoot, who was the third? It was Polish, Italian, and, uh, oh, what was the other group? No, it wasn't. Shoot. It was three, it was three very prominent Catholic groups. There was the, I, oh, Irish, the Irish, the Italians, and the Polish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we were used to go there and witness. They're beautiful. We love. It was a wonderful time there in Scranton. So that's where your president, Joe Biden, comes from. So, yeah, I live there. And uh, anyway, but. Hello, brother. Hello, hello. Hey, Royal Web, Webrador. My goodness, you got more names than, uh, of course, I, I didn't know that you, you actually had been to the Vatican and uh, been given, an, I mean, I, I better shut up. I don't want to get in trouble with my Catholic friends. My mom's Catholic, you guys, so I love Catholics. I pray for Catholics, and I love, you know, uh, you know, I've I've been to Catholic churches during uh, uh, during uh, midnight mass, you know, for Christmas, and I tell you what, man, I was worshiping the Lord in there, and I I tell you what, the presence of God was in there, and uh, you know, and you know, He's everywhere. Of course, our God is everywhere, and I, I felt the presence of God in there, and you know, people gathered together to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, celebrating His. Uh, incarnation. So anyway, um, um, but anyway, uh, but Emmanuel obviously is in a special category now because he's actually been to the Vatican, man. Twice. The Vatican, man. Twice. Yeah, boy, yeah, you guaranteed. <laughs> oh, it was in 06 and 07. One in the summertime and wintertime during my time with the Navy. Okay. Summertime is the busy time of the year where they do the pilgrimage. You see, okay. every walk of life, everybody carrying their flag. <laughs> uh, we saw the Pope coming out with his Pope mobile. That's what we called it, like <laughs> the Pope mobile. That's what it's called. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. uh, but it was a great experience. I never thought in my life, brother, you know, that I would see these places where all the apostles wow. went. Yeah. You walk inside the Vatican, you know, you pay uh. the fee. So it's like when you walk in, it's like its own territory. You got those little Roman guards that stands by. They'll maybe probably check for ID and stuff and make you walk through that there's a big open quarter everybody just gather you know sometimes you'll see the pope will come out on the top of the building people are waiting to say come out on top of there or through his pope mobile uh i have to give credit the oh you enjoy too i got my lamb curry got my lamb curry <laughs> and my mm -hmm. non bread mm -hmm. mm. you well artistic stuff i gotta i gotta be honest it, it's so beautiful the way they did they did the art That's you know I, I gotta give them credit for the uh you know the sistine chapel and the michelangelo's artwork and not just michelangelo but da vinci everything bro like their their, their artwork has preached the gospel to oh. uh like few other things i mean that's one indi that's one way yeah, it's like telling the story, you know, you know, in our ignorance, yeah. of course, I was like, in my early stages, like, oh, look at all these idols, you know, yeah. Maybe it's just icon, it could be for like storytelling, you know, so yeah. I respect that. I respect that just the design just for that time in that ancient yeah. time. And what they have they preserve it is they, they, they'll they tell you, make sure not to have any flash cameras. I mean, no. that's how strict they are, because they said with the flash, it can destroy the art, you know. Oh, so yeah. they, affect the artwork yeah i mean but you know wow. the, the 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 turin you saw i saw the um the turin that's held in the museum inside the vatican i had a quick snap of it like, oh i hope you don't see me i took a quick snap of it 
But of course, I lost all my photos from Italy. I had over 300 photos, brother. Oh, wow. I, I, I put it on one of my friend's computer back then to save it for me. I don't know what happened to this computer. I, I lost all my photos in there, bro. Yeah. I wish I could share all these experiences, man. Yeah. Just, I still like think about it. Like those were yeah. my best possession. Excuse me. I've been to uh, I've been to, you know, the the Shroud of Turin is held in a church called the Church of Saint John the Baptist in in the city of Turin mm. or uh, Milan, Milano. And oh, I've been there. I've been to the church. We were not able to go in. You know, we were there with the group, and uh, and so. But I tell you what, man, I never thought. I I always wanted to avoid going to Italy. I never wanted to go to Italy. I never wanted England, France, <laughs> Sweden, Germany. I loved all those. I never wanted to go to Italy, but I went once. You know, it was a mission trip, and I tell you what, man, it's beautiful. It's so it much was amazing. It was amazing, and so uh, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, and so anyway, one reason why I want to do this tonight is the fact that with Muhammad, there is no historical evidence. Not at There's all. There's nothing from the seventh century, you know, and but with Jesus, we've got this the Shroud of Turin, and we don't put our faith in it. We no. don't need it for our faith. But we also can't deny that there's something going on here. We can't deny that there is something. Our faith is in Jesus Christ, regardless of whether we see or don't see or don't feel. And people have a tendency. They want something concrete to put their hands on to feel. And uh, we don't need that. If we have the word of God, we have the spirit of God. But if there is something, then you got to just stand back and say, you know what? Yeah, there's something going on here. And so thank you, Brother Montez, for kind of opening up that topic for us yesterday. So. Amen, brother. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Could you turn uh, your can you turn your voice up a little bit, uh, Montez? Just okay. Uh, give your your voice is a little bit low. So so anyway, what, what I'm gonna do, you guys, um, uh, is I'm gonna just show some facts about the Shroud of Turin. And just we and we can just talk about them. There, there's like uh, 12 facts. Thank you, baby, uh, about the Shroud of Turin, and uh, and so we'll just look at it. And then, if you guys want to comment on it or say anything about it, Montez, would you like to just say anything about about the Shroud before we start showing the slides? Well, I mean, I I, I do believe uh, the. The shroud of uh, of Turin is actually the the shroud that the Lord was being uh, covered, mm -hmm. and uh, if you notice, you, you can see the the blood stains is actually still there, yeah, from from the from the stab and also in his uh, forehead. Yes. Um. So, I don't think this is actually a coincidence. To be honest with me, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't put our faith in it, but there's something going on. There's something there, and if there is, praise be to God. We don't need it for our faith. Our faith is in the Word of God, not in a shroud. But if there is something, then you know. Yeah. If it's like when, when we went to the uh, the Lake of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, you know, going there, and it's like. Jesus walked on these waters, okay? And it's like, it does something. It's like it's special because he really was there. He really mm -hmm. did do these miracles over there. Amen. And he, you know, and when he walked through the old city, Via Della Rosa, and, you know, there may not be the exact spots, but those were, that was the location where these events happened. And, uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, when I looked at the, at, the, every time I hear about the Shroud of Turin and the fact that Gary Habermas got involved on this, when Gary Habermas got involved, that completely changed it for me. It was just like, wow, this took it to a new level because that means it is uh, like the guy that was talking yesterday. Tell me some PhD. Tell one PhD. Well, Gary Habermas, he's got the PhD and and then he studied the uh, the Shroud of Turin. And so I think I think 
there's a really good indication that there's something going on here. So welcome, Oscar Jake. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start reading some of this. This is number one fact about the Shroud of Turin, okay? One of the interesting pieces um, of the history of the Shroud is that before the image was widely known, beginning in the 6th century. So it existed before the 6th century, but it started becoming widely known, okay? It was in Constantinople, then in France, and uh, uh, beginning in the 6th century, icons or images depicting uh, Jesus looked dramatically different. The pre-6th century images of Jesus were missing the beard, his hair was short, and he looked baby-faced, almost angelic. After the 6th century, after the, the, the Shroud of Turin became, people saw it, when the image were, was more widely known, the icons changed. Such religious images depict Jesus with a long beard, long hair, parted in the middle, with the man's face looking oddly similar to the image on the shroud. This gives anecdotal evidence to not only how the shroud impacted the early stage of Christianity, but also the story of itself, of its origins in Edessa, as told uh, by church historian Eusebius. Now, that was very long, but, you know, this is the thing that is very significant, is that you look at the shroud, and then look at the image of Jesus in the pictures, the Last Supper, the, you know, the Sistine Chapel, all the paintings of Jesus. They always, and in the movies, Jesus of Nazareth, he's always got long hair, the long beard, the parted in the middle, you know, the Passion of the Christ. It's always that way. And it began with the Shroud of Turin. It's because of the Shroud of Turin that they began to depict him in that way. So... You know, that's just kind of a historical trivia. You know, it doesn't say much about the shroud, but um, it does say something about art history, you know, and, um, you know, so anyway. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and look at number two here. Okay. Here's a little bit of a history of the shroud. Okay. Okay. The, the story of the image uh recounted by Silas Gray, and the book is true. Eusebius recalled the account of the ancient king of Edessa, who sent a letter to, to Jesus, inviting him to visit. There was a more personal motivation to the invitation, though. He was suffering greatly from an incurable disease and that he had heard many miracles Jesus had done in Judea and Galilee, so he wanted to get action. Okay, who could blame one of the disciples? Uh, but unfortunately, as the story goes, Jesus declined. Okay, now this right here, I, I didn't read this before. I, uh, I, I don't believe this. You know, <laughs> uh, this is you know it says that Jesus declined. You know, uh, you know Jesus didn't even have to go there. He could have cured him without going there. But uh, something stored. Okay, he also brought. Okay. But it says here that uh, that there were two disciples, Jude and Thaddeus, who healed many in Edessa. And when they came, they brought with them a linen cloth with the image of Christ on the on the uh, okay um, okay. Now this right here, you guys, is, is, we're getting into some. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I didn't read this before. And so this, this is a little bit weird. It's not really talking about the science or history. It's kind of like, a, you know, one of those Gnostic gospel type stories. And so we'll just go ahead and uh, forget, disregard that. And uh, let's look at number three here. Okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. The image on the shroud is a negative one. Now, when it says negative, you know, I think uh, 
I think that this generation maybe doesn't know as much about film negatives, you know, like when you take a picture, you know, like uh, when I was a kid, you know, we used to have cameras, you'd, you'd have the film and then you'd take it to a photo mat and then they would develop it and make the picture. Now we just do everything on the phones, but, <laughs> but nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the shroud of Turin is a negative, a, a film negative. And, uh, you know, the, the guy I was talking about, I said, there's nothing like it in the world. There's nothing like it in the world. And a film negative, you know, um, if you look at it, you look at this right here, this is how a film negative looks. Now, if you look at the shroud um, just without the, you know, the lighting or the, the you know, where they make it like a film negative, you, you can just barely see little images, but you see images. Uh, you see like faint shadows of the of the face and the hands and everything like that. But when you make it a negative like this, you actually see the body. And uh, and this is where it gets really intriguing. Is that how did they make that? How was that image uh, put onto the shroud? And they have tried, they've tried so much to duplicate it, and they can't, even with our technology today. They've tried to duplicate an image like this onto fabric, and they can't. This is, I mean, it's almost miraculous that this image is in this cloth. Okay. 100%. Yeah. And, you know, here, here's what it says. It says... One of the more, more fascinating aspects of the shroud is that it is a negative image, not a positive one. That technology was not even understood until the 19th century. Like in the 1800s, they began to start when they invented the camera and they started, they figured out how to make images, you know, but it wasn't until the 18th century, like 150 years ago with the invention of the camera when photography became a modern reality, which blows holes in the often reported theory that the shroud was mid, a, a medieval forgery that was stained or painted. It would have not be for a thousand years until such ideas as negative images were understood, which no medieval artist could have painted. So, uh, you know this this uh, this uh the fact that it's a negative it is a when you uh and you know what they didn't even know this until they took a picture of it and made the negative it's when they took a picture of it and they made the mm. camera negative that they discovered they saw how clear this image is when it's negative and so uh just uh and and then you know, I guess this is kind of like a spoiler, but how did the image come onto that fabric? And this is where it's amazing. They says that that it had to come from light from the body. It wasn't light that came from the outside, but light that came from the inside of the body going outwards that caused and then uh, they actually show that the body you know uh when he comes back to life that the glow the glory that came out you know was so powerful and one guy he, uh, one jewish uh uh scientist said that it was it's similar to the big bang even though we don't believe in the big bang but something of that magnitude to create, to imprint the image on. Oh, that makes that, sense. Uh, you know, onto that. So, what? Yeah. So basically, <laughs> it was like a. Oh. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. So uh, basically, it was like a, a strong flashlight that yes. almost put like. Uh, 
put a picture of his body yes. there. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. How can he? I... <laughs> She's so excited about this. We were watching these. We were binge watching Shroud videos today. <laughs> Since oh, last yeah. Friday. Information, yeah. I saw that was yeah. similar. They brought it in um, Pints of Aquinas. That oh. teacher, uh, a, this Catholic guy, um, yes, he was talking about the shrouds of turn about that. Uh, I was wondering when he, when he, when, when, when the Lord died after they put the grave, I wonder his, his, as he resurrected, his holiness, you know, the Holy Spirit emulating it, left a mark in it. Because they also yes. talked about that, that you could see his finger, the, the, the nail print mark. Yes, it's just wow. It, it, you know, this is, you know, like, you know, I don't know if you saw the very beginning where I talked about the where this this guy who was a monk but he was also an engineer and he said the chance that this is someone other than jesus is 250 billion to one exactly because there's so much congruity with the gospel story in this so, so did you amen. Say amen. i was just gonna say that the one that brother emmanuel is talking about um he was saying that if you know when the when um that individual whoever that is it was wrapped in the shroud yeah. he didn't turn to um to get up so no. there is no turning or just um smudging what happened smudging the, like yeah. yeah because the picture is so the the imprint is so yeah. perfect on the shroud it looks like he just, you know, like his glory came out and left the, yeah. you know, the shroud intact, like the image on the shroud yeah. is like perfectly preserved I, like that. I mean, uh, there was one guy who was saying that it was almost as if the body, uh, when the body resurrected and it didn't just stay there. It, it just like it disappeared. You know, it it, it mm -hmm. went through and the shroud sank into the body as it was leaving. The gravity. Yeah, the gravity. The gravity. Yeah. And, yeah. and he said that's how the, the image on the back and on the front. And so but you were saying something, Montez, about that? Oh no, no. Uh I don't have uh anything to to uh to say but uh, this is a very uh, an interesting discovery and there is so many uh, skeptics are, are trying to debunk this mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you know why because it scares them because <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I truly believe God left to mercy God gives all these signs yes I may not know how he we, you know I, I do believe when we see the Lord, He's gonna be in His in His in His holiness and the glorified body of God, being a holy God. His body shines through, but the imprints, you know, just to show that He did exist, He came in the incarnate, the flesh. I mean, what other criminals you gonna find that has the shroud marking? Are there any other similar shrouds or like the criminals that they buried? You're not gonna find that. There are a lot of a lot other of shrouds, shrouds, but there is no imprint. There's no there. image. Yes. This one has the image. It's the unique. other one didn't have the image. You know. So NASA came in <laughs> yeah. and they NASA. said that they want to do with a VP8, which is mm -hmm. like uh, 3D, because all the pictures we have, yes, we yes. Were talking, it's 2D, two dimensions, but they want to create a 3D. So if you take a regular picture of someone, and try to do it with the VP8, you get this blurry, it doesn't even look like a human. But when they tried it on the shroud of Turin, the picture came alive as 3D. Three the dimensional. Whole, the whole That's body beautiful. is That's like beautiful. a human being laying there with a yeah. the face. You can see the cheeks, you can yeah. see yeah. Um, the teeth and everything. Yeah, the teeth. It says. And about the crown, um, it wasn't like regular crown like that. It was like a cap because the whole skull oh. um, is, the, you can see the wounds and the bleeding. The wound yeah. has got to make sense. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, like I said, we don't put our faith in this, but man, when you got something like this, God yeah. left it there. Like, you know, if they find Noah's Ark, they say that 
so many times they say they found things and I don't know if they found it yet. I think they're going to find it just because Jesus predicted it's going to be as in the days of Noah. I think they're going to find it. But um, but this right here, man, it's just like it's, it's just kind of a surprise. You know, the picture of the um, the there is a painting from the Lord Jesus um, from fifth century. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very famous painting. Um, that I don't know if you have it, you want to show it to them, but it shows the person who painted this, that person copied the picture from the shroud, from the shroud oh. on the paper. And it's so weird. I was, I was going to um, say this. I was thinking about this like um, today because the beard is kind of like parted. Yeah. Like there's a, there's a gap in, in the beard like here. Yeah. And it's not like perfectly in the middle. You know, some some men you see their beard is like kind of like yeah, parted, yeah. but this one is not in the middle. It's kind of like on the side. And it's like there's a gap, and that's how he painted in the fifth century. I don't know who the artist is, but he painted it like that. But you know what I was thinking? You know when they, um, you know, in the book of Isaiah it says they plucked his what? beard. Okay. Pulled. Who That's knows? So maybe that was the part that they pulled out, and there's a gap because yeah. they pulled out his beard. Yeah. Um, Very interesting. So they, yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I wonder if they got any injury when they when they whipped Jesus. You know how in the Passion of Christ they depict they hit the face, but even though they try to make it dramatic, like I mean the beating that they gave him, you know that yeah. from all the different tools. Well, you know I don't know if I don't know if you saw this, but. Um, well, you know what? We're going to get to that. So uh, let me just go ahead and put up the next one here. And uh, the blood is real. Wow. One of the pathologists, Dr. Vignan, said that the anatomical realism of the image was so precise oh, yeah. that the separation of serum and cellular mass was evident in many of the blood stains. This is important characteristic of dried blood, which means there is real, actual, dried human blood in the cloth. Hallelujah. And one doctor said that it was tortured blood. There is a medical term yes. called um, hemo hemoglobin. hemoglobin or something. It was so bad, the injury, that it just like, created this thing i forget what I, th I think i know what you're talking about sister yeah it is, it's a very dark red blood yes, because yes. what happens the is torture. like you start adrenaline when, yeah no no you, when you're beating someone and all the white cells are dying they can't and all the red ones come so the blood and bella uh, starts to um come out, you know, the bilirubin is a kind of pinkish, reddish color, and it gives more color to the blood. Mm -hmm. So when someone is tor goes through like th that kind of a torture that the Lord went through, the blood kind of, it's like a lot darker than regular um, when you're bleeding. If, if it's tortured and you're bleeding and the blood color is darker than the regular red blood, well, this, this is one thing they said, too, about the blood that's on the shroud. This is there's actually two different kinds of blood. Uh, I mean, it's the same blood, but yeah. different aspects of the blood. One is the blood uh, at the when the blood was um, the blood that came out while he was alive. And then there's the blood that kept oozing after he died. Something happens to the blood when you're alive and when you're dead. For it's sure. still it it's, yeah, it's, it's still blood, but and on the shroud you can tell which blood was uh, from that came out while he was alive versus. I mean, it doesn't mean that he was alive under the shroud, but the but the bleeding occurred while he was alive. Yeah, yeah. and so I mean, you can tell the, the the difference between those those you know imprints on the shroud from those two different kinds of blood. And so, uh, amen. But, uh, I'm gonna say before you go, it's gonna be a real quick one. Yeah. Do you remember from the when the guy that did the documentary on the Ark of the Covenant where they said they got the blood of supposed to see? Oh, yeah, yeah, Ron Wyatt. Yeah. We should do the same with that one, take that blood stain, 
if yeah. it matches what the chromosome where he didn't have the father, that just shows that that was the son of God. I wonder if yeah. they would. Do something um, you know what? They said that there is X and Y chromosomes in oh. the uh, in this. And so they I, I listened. I wasn't I was listening for that. And, and he did. He does mention that. Uh, but, you know, this thing about uh, I just want to say my, my wife was saying something about Bill Rubin, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to say I'm, I'm a total ignoramus. And I thought Billy Rubin was a baseball player. But, you know, it's <laughs> anyway, that's just, you know, she knows <laughs> medical stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Actually, I thought he was a rapper, but anyway. So, did you want to say so, uh, Montez something? Um, well, I mean, uh, I, I, I want to add uh, some uh, info uh, about the, the, the blood. Uh, according to Ron White, uh, he he actually uh, did took the, the the blood and went to the laboratory to test it. And the uh, Israeli uh, scientists they did actually the the test, mm -hmm. and they found out that this blood is human blood, but it it, it only has twenty three chromosomes chromosome from from his mother. Yes, not see, fathers. Yeah, you see, a normal human being does have twenty three chromosome from his mother and twenty three chromosome from his from his father, but yeah. this blood only has twenty three chromosome and one Y. Yes, and the, yeah, and they were like, "Who who blood is this?" Yes, and then. Yeah, and then uh, Ron White told him, this is the blood of your Messiah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, man. All right. Yeah. Let's look on to the next, just because we got a lot of these. So I just want to, I got 12 of them, so I want to get through them. Um, so it's on one, one more thing about the blood, that okay. it's, it, it is actually blood. Because they try to say it's ink, it's a painting, oh, yeah. a painting. it's um, stain from something. But um, the whole, all these um, scientists that went from USA to um, examine, and um, they were, when they were going, they were thinking like, oh, well, we know it's fake. But when they came back, um, because of the blood test and all that, they said we can't, it's not fake. There is something in there that we can't explain. Yeah. And it was like, you know, because they came up with, you know, the, let me just say this real fast and just to throw it away, it's not even worth mentioning, but it is like in the eighties, there was a group that said, you know what, we want to do carbon dating on this to see how old it was. And they went and they got like a couple of strands of string or something and they, they did carbon dating and it came out that it was from a thousand from the year 1360, you know, 1360, like, you know, th uh, you know, 14th century. Yeah. 14th century. And, and so because that's the, the carbon dating did that. And so that big media thing, the shroud is a fake, the shroud is a fake. It was all over the world and everybody, and but you know what? Later on, there was so much evidence to the contrary that people didn't just accept that result, and they kept on studying to to say. I mean, it, you know, obviously the, the the scientists who did it were not trying to just to say that the shroud is fake, but they really did find that it was from a thousand three hundred six. But what they found is that the piece of strand that they took it from was from a patch not wow. from the original shroud but from a patch because the shroud had been in a fire and when it made in a fire there was some tears in it and there were some nuns who tried to sew it into and they put a different cloth and so they know that it's not the same cloth as the as the shroud it's it's a little like a little patch gotcha. and that patch is from 1360 but the the rest of the shroud is not and so so yeah. i i um I'm, i saw i don't know if we watched this together but i saw there was a husband and wife um she was a registered nurse and 
the husband, I don't know what's his um, profession, but they were so determined to prove to them that what they came up with, with this carbon dating, it's from 14th century. It's not an, it's not accurate information. So what they did, they took um, the picture of the report from the carbon dating and she put it under the microscope, the wife. And for 11 days, she's just looking at the picture. She's not doing nothing except looking at the um, finding of the picture, the, the report of the carbon dating. And then she realizes something, that the threads of the shroud on right. this side is different than the threads on the other side of the shroud. And they, when they examine it, they figure like, oh my gosh, this is something that they patched on this side because, you know, this one, this side is pure linen. Mm -hmm. This one, this side is cotton. They're not the same material, yeah. not the same material. So they figure it out, you know, this, they took it from the site that was from 14th century, from the, like, yeah, the patch, the, the, patch, the one that they than, tried to fix it, yeah. And they, you know, they also did research, uh, and these are some Jews who said that in order for the Jewish burial custom, it had to be linen. Yeah. And this is linen, you know, except for those patches, you know. And so, so they just tried to preserve the patches as over time, like you mentioned, you said there was like a fire, so they just try to protect it and patch yeah. it up. Some nuns, well-meaning nuns, what they wanted to do because there was a, it burned holes in it. You could oh, see it okay. if you look at the picture. You could see the, uh, you can actually see where the fire. You see the results of the fire. Oh, see those yeah. holes? Yeah. Yes. So that was the result of the fire, and so that's where they took the uh, patches from, the string from, and that's why they thought it was thirteen. But anyway, that's been disproven, and so we can just throw that out. That's right. So, uh, yeah. That's amazing. Anyway. Yeah, so here's another one. What we know this about the shroud, that the man was mutilated, like the Bible says. Wow. Those same pathologists detected swelling under the eyes, the natural reaction to bruising from a beating. The New Testament claims Jesus was severely beaten before his crucifixion. Rigor mortis is also evident with the enlarged chest and distended feet, classic marks of actual crucifixion, which means the man in the burial linen was mutilated in exactly the same manner that the New Testament says Jesus of Nazareth was beaten, whipped, and executed by means of crucifixion. Oh. And... Uh, they showed, you know, uh, the picture uh, and the back. You can. They said they counted 120 stripes on his back. Oh but, my the, God. but the stripes are not just in the back. They're in the front as well. And they're on the legs, yeah, on the, on legs the arms. I mean, the head to toe. Yeah. It's. Uh, I just feel so convicted in my heart. You know, like when I see the Passion of Christ, he yeah. just. You, know, you, you can see it's so anointed that he did that for us. Every whip, every mark that you hear, it's like, this is, man, I just feel like I want to cry right now because. It, I tell you. And one thing that is not on this list, but I'm, I'm going to say it right now, which is, I, I found it so powerful. And that is that on this, on this shroud, they, they looked at the feet and they actually, because, you know, the, the, the shroud was like up against the feet of Jesus. And they found dust on the feet. Tiny little bit of dust. So look the feet, yeah. And they said that that dust comes from limestone that is only found in Jerusalem. Meaning that the person in this picture walked in Jerusalem. Barefoot. Yeah. So, <laughs> wow. So, I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's, I tell you what, man, this is like, this is, uh, I mean, this is really amazing, you know. So, uh, let's see, seven. <laughs> okay. The, the positive image reveals historic details. The positive, okay, now when we're talking positive image, it's because of the, like I said, it's a 
negative image. It's like a negative, a photo negative, you know. The positive image taken from the negative one left on the shroud shows in detail many of the historic markers that connect to the gospel accounts of Jesus' death. You have the scourging marks from a Roman flagrum. Okay, that's from the whip, you know, the cat of nine tails, on the arms, legs, and back. Lacerations around the head from the crown of thorns. You can clearly see the, the, where the thorns uh, cut his head and bleeding from the crown of thorns. Um, and, you know, they didn't do that to everybody. They did it as mockery to Jesus, you know. His shoulder appears to be dislocated. Remember in the Passion of the Christ, there's that scene where he puts his arm out and then they pull his arm out to make it reach the hole and they dislocate it. And, and in the book of Psalms, Psalm 22, uh, Jesus says, all my bones are out of joint. <laughs> so here, the dislocated shoulder probably from carrying the cross beam and falling. According to scientists who examined the shroud, all of these wounds were inflicted while he was alive. Then, of course, this is, this is amazing. There is the stab wound in the chest. Wow. I mean, you know, that very specific wound and it was blood that were in, um, and the nail marks in the wrists and in the feet, all consistent with the eyewitness accounts recorded in the gospel. So, just <laughs> wow, <clears throat> forgiveness. So, yeah, um, all right. If you guys want to say anything, just feel free, okay? Now, this is fascinating. It says there is nothing like this on the planet. Not at on all. On planet Earth, there is nothing like this. The image of the man with all of his face, facial features and hair and wounds is absolutely unique. Nothing like it in all of the world. It's totally inexplicable. And given that there are no stains indicating decomposition on the linen itself, we know that whatever body was in the shroud left before the decomposition process began. <laughs> oh. And just wow. as the gospel writers testified, Jesus' resurrection was on the third day. What a, now I just want to say something about that because the Bible says in Psalm 16, where Jesus says, you will not suffer your Holy One to suffer corruption in the grave. And the corruption is the decomposition when the, the body starts disintegrating. And, and they're saying here, there's no indication that this had started yet. It wow. didn't start the decomposition yet because the blood the wounds were still fresh when he rose again when the resurrection happened so and because he's a holy god with no blemish we we are, we are a sinful corrupted body we would just decompose easily and but this is definitely unique it's got this makes sense all the connections even right now feeling the holy spirit god will leave so many markings yeah. and evidence that he exists yeah it's amazing there was one more thing um from the the wound on the side there wasn't only blood coming out on the shroud but they found blood and water on the shroud yeah there's a, a like a stripe that, that, that comes out from the from the the wound on the side if you show the yeah. picture maybe we can see it you could just see the like a streak of water and blood coming out from the side yeah, we can't yeah. see it. it's on the back side. It's on the back. Yeah, this is the front. Okay. But the, the shroud is, uh, yeah, it's two lengths of the body because they, they put it under him and then folded this on top of him. Mm -hmm. So this is the top view. But if you look at the bottom view, you see 
the blood and water see, uh, coming out. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's, side, like like where the hand is, it's like a line coming down. He, well, it's no, no, it's coming out vertically, coming out like from his side, going to the right. Oh, but, okay. I but but you see, because it's it's twice this length. We're only seeing the front. It's fourteen feet long. Yeah, but the back side, but because it was under him, and then they folded it on top of him. So this is the front view, but the back view, you see the 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 blood and water coming out. So, and uh, the by the way, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, 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 sorry, guys, but uh, uh, Steve, uh, can you go back? Because I I I I noticed uh, something here. Uh, in the picture. Uh, yeah, the 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 picture. The oh, picture. in the picture. Okay. If if you can zoom in on on his arm, you can see there's uh, some kind of a hole. Yes. Yeah, that's the wound. No, no, no. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, not on 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 his arm, but on his hands. You can see that there's like a some kind of a hole. Yes. This yeah. That's the, uh, yeah. Absolutely. The nail. It, it's so clear. It, you, you know something else, Montez, that they said about that is that the wound is not in the palm of the hand. It's on the wrist. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, the if they put the nail in the palm of the hand, it could not carry the body weight. No, it will slip off. And so they put it in the wrist in between the bones yeah. there, the femur and the whatever, and, you know, and that <sighs> would allow it the strength to hold the body and you can very clearly see the wound on the on the wrist right there it's you know one thing if you notice on the hands um brother emmanuel look at the hands you don't see the thumbs there's only four fingers on left hand and the and the picture is because this is you have to think about it. this picture is if you when you take a picture um, the left is the right, and the right is the yes. left. Kind yes. of right. <laughs> so if you don't see the thumbs, but when they did the VP8 with the 3D pictures, and then you can see the thumbs oh. that is like folded like this. Uh, okay. Yeah. And you can uh, see the, the bleeding from the other side of the uh, hand. On the oh. other side, you see the blood, but you don't, you don't see the wound. You just see the blood coming down. Oh, Lord Jesus. <sighs> Did you want to say anything else, Montez, about that? Uh, no comment, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's amazing. It really is. You inspired us to go and look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We've been watching since last night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, okay. The uh, here's number eight. Okay, there's nothing like it on the planet. And, and you know, when we say there's nothing like it on the planet, I just want to say it's NASA that said that wow. because it's when they did that thing because it it's a two d it's a two dimensional image, but when they put it through that thing, that VP8 thing. It became a 3D image. <laughs> Hallelujah. It Whoa. became a 3D image where you could see the face and the 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 you know the texture of the face and the it became a 3D image. They said there's nothing in history like this. There's nothing in the world like this. <laughs> yes, Lord, you know, they use the VP8 to take pictures of the surface of the moon and yeah. the Mars and this and that. And they tried that to take a picture of the negative. Mm -hmm. They took it from the negative. And when they took it, every angle you look, it looks like he's looking at you. <laughs> so Gary Habermas was saying he went to the house of Ron um, Schwartz. I think that's the guy's name, the German guy, the scientist, um, the Jewish guy. And he says that there was... I think it was his house or somebody else's house. I don't, I'm not sure, but he printed and he put it right by the entrance. And he's like, I walked in. I was like, whoa, he's looking at me. 
Well, it's like 3D pictures. Like everywhere you look, every angle, it's like he's looking at you. Yeah. Oh, man. Unbelievable, man. But, okay. Oh. The faces of Jesus. Then there is the cloth itself, which is entirely unique. Nowhere has any other cloth been found to have depicted the image of a dead man on its surface. Again, in the history of archaeology and the study of historical artifacts, nowhere have we come across a burial linen with a body imprint. There are many burial linens, and of the Jews, you know, because they have the, they're the ones who come with the linen and stuff and everything. But none of them have the body image on it. But this has the image in, in uh, as a film negative that turns into a 2D image that turns into a 3D image. <laughs> There's nothing like it. This is, you know, so, you know, you know, it's. Uh, wow. They used Amazing. to put it in the linen and then um, in the um, tomb and then. They would go after a few months or a year, and then they would collect the bones and put it in an Auschwitz oh, yeah, and yeah, save it. Yeah, yes. To and then they used they reused the tomb yes. again and again and oh. again. But this tomb was empty, brand new. Nobody used it. Yeah. It was from a rich man. Yes, like so, the Bible says. Exactly. And then when Nicodemus and um. And Joseph of Arimathea, when they come, they the Bible says they bring yeah. spices and linen, about 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. And they come and they just, you know, Correct. like in a haste because they, yeah. the, 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 the Sabbath, Sabbath was come, would start. So they quickly, they just lay down on the shrub, pull it over. And what you see in the picture, if you go back in the picture, if... Um, I want to show something. The face or the, the, uh, the, the whole body? It doesn't matter. The face is okay, too. The face. Um, okay. Here's the actually, face. it's better. Yeah, you see between the hair and the jaw, the face, yeah. there is a big gap between the hair and the uh, face. Yes, yes. You, yes. you see the black kind of like uh, there's a gap. So what they would do is um, they would take a handkerchief or face cloth and they would just close the mouth of, you know, like Tied bring it up tight here. Shut. Kind of like, you know, in the cartoons when someone has like a toothache or something, <laughs> they tie it like on the top. Oh, okay. Yeah, they 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 did that. So if you ask me, I mean, I don't put my faith in, in, in this picture or, yeah. you know, I know, I know for the fact of watching like 12 hours of this, all kinds of, uh, you know, um, uh, documentary on the shroud. I know it's the Lord Jesus, but I don't worship the picture yeah. or the shroud. But what I'm saying is like the Bible says that the handkerchief, the cloth that was on his face, it yeah. was folded yeah, yeah, and it was like right next to he the loved, shroud. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Our Lord is so organized too. He gets <laughs> up and he folds the yeah, handkerchief he and folds... he puts it there. But there is another story to that. That means I'm coming back soon. Yeah. I don't know if uh, mm -hmm. brother, um, I heard about that. knows about that. The Jewish tradition would they fold the cloth? That means about he's I'm not guilty. Back soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Oh. Yeah, when they eat dinner, if they need if they're not done and for some reason they have to get up and go do something and come yeah. back, like use the restroom or whatever. And what they do is they fold the um, napkin they have and they leave it on the plate. So when the person comes, they don't take the plate. They know this person is coming back soon to mm. continue eating. The so what the Lord did is he, he folded, he put it there like I'm coming back soon. <laughs> yeah. The second coming is coming soon. Glory. Yes. Okay. Come Lord. even now, Lord. Amen. Yes. Okay. The linen is old. The imprinted cloth is old. The linen itself has existed for over 600 years as the so-called Shroud of Turin. 
and nearly 2,000 years as the image of Edessa, named after the small town outside of Antioch in modern Syria. While the carbon dating of the 80s placed the shrouds age to the Middle Ages around AD, the new evidence roundly discredited both the results and method of that dating. However, new evidence dates the date comfortably within the time frame that Jesus was said to have been crucified and buried, yeah. A.D. 33. And there's another interesting thing, and it's a little bit hard to see, but they really, if you look at the eyes, you know, they, they did a little bit of research on the eyes there, and they said that there is, appears to be coins on the eyes. And the coins are, are what, what was like the widow's mite. And they were specifically, and there's Hebrew writing on the coins. And, wow. and this writing, you guys, was from Pilate. It had the name of Pilate on it. Pontius Pilate. Pilate Caesar. No, no, Pilate. Oh. And uh, which is, you know, the guy that, you know, turned him over to be crucified. And But they used to do that. They would put the eyes in the, I mean, coins in the eyes and on the mouth. And then quite often after they find a body, a, a, a skeleton after a few years, they'd find coins that because, the you know, the body disintegrated. And, but the coins are still there. And so, but this is something they used to do to put the coins in the eyes. You know, it was more of a Roman thing, you know, because they believed that that money would, uh, so you could pay the guy in hell. His name was to cross the river Styx. You have to pay the boat. <laughs> That's what the Romans believed. So it could be the Roman soldiers put the coins on his eyes or something. But I mean, but they are from the time of Pilate, you know, just. Unbelievable. Maybe so. that centurion that um, said this was the son of uh, God at, at the. That's possible. Cross. You know, possible, but it's more, I think, it's probably the Roman soldiers who were, you know, told to guard the uh, tomb, you know. And you know, may, you know, but I don't know, you know, so. Yeah, uh, I, I, I believe uh, uh, according to the, to the Bible. And the eyewitnesses from the Roman soldiers and the the people are uh, over there. Um, I, I believe there were there were two gods. Uh, uh, there were uh, Roman soldiers, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, the people in the Roman Empire. They even saw it, uh, and also a lot of uh, Jewish people. I mean. We're talking about like 500 eyewitnesses. Yeah. You cannot make this up. Yeah. And and you know and what? This, yeah. You, you know, I just want to say, I mean, you're, you're bringing up a, a phenomenal point there. And that is the first people who saw the miracle was Gentiles. They were those Roman soldiers. Because it says they saw the angel come down roll the stone away and sit on it and so they're the first ones to that's the closest i witness of the resurrection was these roman soldiers you know and it's and uh you know and so you, you kind of and then when they went to report it to the priests the priest told them oh we're going to give you a bunch of money we want you to lie about what you saw but they saw it. They saw the resurrection happening. I mean, it was just, you know, and the fact that it was Gentiles, not Jews, who first saw that miracle, you know, and Romans. So, you know, it just shows that he died for everybody. And uh, so praise be to God. Yeah. And also there's a, a, another uh Evidence about the, the the city of Sodom and uh, Gomorrah. Gomorrah. Yes. That that is a very clear evidence. Yeah. And Sodom. that's uh, and that city actually uh, uh, still exists, by the way. Yes. Those. Uh, you know, I've seen that 
And you know what? They, they knew about it. Even in Joseph, Josephus wrote about where Sodom went, and he said the smell of sulfur, you could still smell the sulfur there from when yeah. the fire and brimstone, because you know, it says fire and brimstone was sent on the city from heaven, and brimstone is sulfur. And it was, you know, shot down to there. And so, yeah, so maybe we'll do that on another night, uh, uh, Sheikh Montez, you know, and uh, we'll talk about Sodom and Gomorrah because that, that is very... Uh, a very important subject as well. I just recently spoke about Sodom and Gomorrah from the Quran's perspective, and uh, but it'd be very good to talk about it from the biblical perspective and the archaeological evidence that there is for it, because all of this shows you that the Bible is is real. It's historical, and that it is yep. right. It is true. It's not just these stories like the Quran has these crazy stories about flying carpets and talking ants but this is real <laughs> history <laughs> do you know about the flying carpets brother i'm aladdin <laughs> <laughs> aladdin uh and also the 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 flying uh donkey with the wings of course but burak yes and uh <laughs> yeah and oh and my the, god yeah, all the crazy myths of the Quran, but yeah, but so you know, when you have something like this, it just let me just read the uh, the very last. Let me see, eleven, okay, and twelve, okay. I think I read this, but it says, let me just read this one last time, just just to kind of drive it home. The odds against this image being someone other than Jesus are astronomical. 225 billion to one. There's so many consistencies between this image and what the Bible says about Jesus' death. And so, uh, yeah, so there you go, you guys. I was kind of hoping to share that. And uh, again, uh, thank you, Maltez, for uh, bringing it up. And so, what do you what do you think about all this, Oster Jag? Oster Jag, are you there? Well, uh, I I guess he, 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 he yeah yeah I don't yeah know. He, he's I, been here the whole time but I don't know he hasn't said anything so oops yeah well Oster Jake you know the difference between this and Muhammad is that there is no archaeological evidence of Muhammad you know from the seventh century. From the time but this was exactly from the time of christ and it's got all the earmarks of a genuine historical artifact and so uh, yeah so there you go yes houston the closest that islam comes to this is the cloak of Muhammad that was supposedly worn on the night journey. Oh, do they actually have that? Does it have uh, uh any... Wait, which uh, night uh, journey? The night uh, uh Mahraj. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know that they had the cloak being subjected i'm not aware that the cloak is being subjected to scientific analysis <laughs> miracle brother the burak ride yes the, the burak, burak ride, ride. yeah so, there you go um yeah the uh let me see the burak what was, was that other video that you had from oh that's from about sodom and gomorrah right yeah yeah uh yeah. we can okay. do that uh later yeah we could do that another night because that that's an awesome awesome topic and like i said i just did something about sodom and gomorrah a few weeks ago 
And uh, but from the Islamic perspective, the one thing you notice from the Islamic story, it's in there like 12 different times at least, the story of the Sodom and Gomorrah, the burning. And the one thing that's consistent in all of them is Allah really has it out for Lot's wife. Because oh, yeah. it says we predestined her to be turned into to be destroyed and to be turned into a pillar of salt. I mean, he was he was out to get her, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, she, you degenerate women. That's right. I'm after you. Uh, <laughs> it's serious. It's like man, half a brain. <laughs> uh, yeah, she was destined to be destroyed. You know, that's what it says about her. So, oh, wow. Gotta love Islam. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you guys, if uh, if you have anything you'd like to share, please feel free to. Uh, if there's any Muslims here who would like to come on, uh, we have Oster Jake, but he's not talking tonight. And uh, I hope Oster Jake that some of this impacts you. You know, like I said, our faith isn't built on these things. You know. But there's something going on here, something yeah. amazing going on here. And so, yeah, that's why we want to talk about it. And, Come uh, on, ostrich. The evidence is too strong. <laughs> the cloak doesn't mention hadith. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look at that, uh, that, that uh, cloak, Houston Euler. So, <laughs> I got too many semen stains that, that Aisha had to clean off. Like, <laughs> that cloak <laughs> with her with her with her thumbnails <laughs> that's yep. all right you guys well i think that i think we've we've been on for almost an hour and a half and yep. uh appreciate you guys coming on being uh, with us amen good discussion uh, I enjoyed this yeah. program. well i tell you what man it's just like you really need to like you know it's not 100% sure that it is Jesus. It's yeah. not 100% sure, but there's something here. There's yeah. something here that is just uh, real. It's just true story. It's almost like you're taking the story from the Bible. You're seeing the exact description that we're looking at. Yeah. I mean, think about you from all the signs. What other image or any people that's been on in their days of being locked up? Yes. Something like this. God leaves a unique marking that he existed. He came. He died and rose again. Yes. Let me see if I could uh, find the. Oops, one second here. Okay. I just want to show this. Uh, trying to see. Okay. I think you guys have seen this before, but I, I'll show it to you anyway here. The uh, You know, this is what, the, what happened when they um, when they put, the, put it in that NASA thing, the VP8 you know, they put it in the VP8. The VP8. Let me write that down. Yeah. The uh, and then they uh, when they did that, um, you know, this is that called? Is that like a special? scanning tool they use vp it's kind of like you know they use it to look at the the moon and all the the surface of the moon and all to make these 3d images but they did it on this and look at the look at the 3d images there of the face and the body oh. and this is a flat it's not it doesn't have these ridges and stuff in it uh you know but it's a two-dimensional just a cloth but it came out this 3D image, you know. Look at that. I mean, they said there's nothing like it in the world. Nothing like it. His yeah. holiness. His <laughs> depression. Yes. Wow. So, it's our sin, Father. 
Praise be to the Father. Amen. All Amen. right, you guys. Well, thank you again for being with us. If you haven't done it, Ostrich Egg, please do it now. Jesus, help me. Amen. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, yes. come into my heart. Jesus, help me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, come into my heart. Yesur sa'idni. Yesur samahni. Yesur udkhul albi. He loves you. We love you. Thank you guys for being with us. Thank you, Montez. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Ostrich Egg. Even though you didn't say nothing tonight, but uh, we pray that the Lord will bless your life with salvation. In Amen. Jesus' name, God bless you guys. Just love you guys. God bless you all. God bless. Peace. If you have ever wondered why dull apologists lie so much, it's because on a rare occasion that they tell the truth, this happens. One of the reasons I accepted Islam was the scientific miracles. I'll be honest with you. And now we know that this whole scientific miracles was absolute nonsense. You're going to ask that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say.